In a recent video, we covered everything there is to know if you want to get your podcast going as far as audio goes. But with most hosting platforms now offering the option to upload your podcast as a video format, as well as the traditional video hosting platforms like YouTube and Vimeo, adding video to your podcast is more relevant and important now than ever. It's an effective way to diversify your content and reach a broader audience, as you'll see in the next few minutes, and it doesn't have to be overly complicated. From simply using a logo or a sound visualizer to shooting custom B-roll all the way to using a single or multi-camera setup and some lights, there are many ways you can add video to your podcast. Once again, if you're looking to learn everything there is to know about starting your podcast, I highly recommend you check out our Podcasting 101 2023 edition video in which I break down all other aspects of the podcast creation process, from microphones and podcast mixers to audio editing and hosting that we've linked in the video description below. In the meantime, back to the subject at hand. So what if you want to add video to your podcast, but you're not comfortable on camera? Well, no problem. There are plenty of options for you to circumvent this issue. The first and simplest way is to use a logo or a still image like a photo. You can also add a basic animation for your image to make the visual a little more interesting. Another effective option is to use a waveform visualizer like this one. If you're going to go that route, I highly recommend using an audio waveform generator such as Headliner. Headliner takes the final audio export of your podcast episode and converts it into a great looking video with a customizable waveform visualizer and background art. It also makes it very easy to export videos in various lengths and ratios, making it a perfect option if you're looking to create short teasers for Instagram, TikTok, or other social media platforms. Other options worth checking out include Audiogram, Wave, and Ophonic. And for the most adventurous amongst you, you can even create your own with software like Adobe After Effects or Apple Motion. One last option if you don't want to be on camera yourself is to use B-roll. Now B-roll could be virtually anything, but I encourage you to use B-roll shots that are visually pleasing and if possible that connect to your subject. If your podcast is about nature, for instance, a B-roll shot of the wind brushing the treetops or a river flowing could be a great fit and try to get a segment that can loop easily on itself to be able to extend it to the length of your episode while avoiding jittery transitions. Now that we covered all bases for video alternatives, let's talk about cameras. Now you might think that you need to invest in a brand new camera and we'll definitely take a look at some options later on in this video, but chances are you already own one or even maybe two. The computer you're watching this video on probably has a webcam built in and if not, the smartphone in your pocket definitely has one. So instead of buying a camera, first I'd recommend looking into investing in a light or two. The reason for that is that even a basic lighting setup can drastically improve the performance of a small sensor camera like a webcam and bring up the production value of your videos significantly. And to illustrate this, here's what this studio looks like with the house lights on and now with a basic two light setup. Here I'm using two litre beams by Logitech as a key and fill light and a Nanlite Lito Light mini LED panel as an accent light to add a little color to the background. Another great option to achieve professional looking lighting is to use a softbox. As the name indicates, the softbox diffuses the light and softens it, resulting in a more homogeneous lighting and a softer edge between the low and high contrast areas of the image. A light with a softbox is a great investment for anyone looking to create high quality video content and doesn't have to break the bank. This GVM setup, for instance, comes with everything required and is a great place to start. One last bit of advice for effective lighting is to use accent lights to give more depth to your shot. I mentioned the Nanlite mini LED panel, which is great for that, or you could go with the Nanlite Pavotube T87X, like the one we're using in the studio. Light is your friend, so use it. Just as lighting is important and can make or break the general vibe of your video, so is your general set design. Try to find props that match the theme of your podcast. For instance, if your podcast is about music, display instruments in the background. Or if it's about travel, pictures or objects that evoke your favorite places. And if you don't know where to start, here's my advice. In doubt, keep it simple and minimalist. Just your laptop and microphone on a table in front of a clean background will look a thousand times better than a messy desk. Now, let's talk about using a camera to add video to your podcast. 
If your main computer is a laptop, it probably came with a built-in webcam located at the top of the screen and an app to use it. Just make sure your microphone or your audio interface is selected as your system's audio input so that your audio and video are synchronized right out of the box and you're ready to shoot. If you're using a desktop computer, you might need to use an external USB webcam such as this Logitech 4K Pro webcam or this Osbot Tiny2 AI powered PTZ webcam. The only difference being that you're plugging the webcam externally to one of your computer's USB ports. Now let's talk about another camera you already own and you're probably watching this video on it right now. That's right, modern smartphones have very elaborate cameras built in and you should definitely consider it as an option if you'd like to add video to your podcast without having to buy an additional piece of equipment. I'm actually using my phone right now to shoot this segment of the video. To use your phone, you'll also need some kind of support for it. This Ulanzi MT54 is a pretty cool option as it doubles as both a light stand and a phone tripod that can fit both on a disc or on the floor. Or you can just use a traditional tripod, but they can be a bit cumbersome, so they might not be the best option if you're recording in a tight space. One of the additional benefits of using your phone as a camera is that you can use an app compatible USB podcast microphone like the Rode PodMic USB or the Shure MV7, turning your phone into a complete mobile podcast recording solution that can follow you everywhere. We talked about webcams, we talked about phone cameras, let's now talk about actual cameras. Now there is no shortage of great choices when it comes to cameras that can be added to a podcast setup. But for the sake of this video, I decided it would be a good idea to keep the whole package, that's camera and lens, under $1000. And for this purpose and price tag, two Sony cameras came to mind. The ZV-1 Mark II and the ZV-E10. The ZV-1 Mark II is a perfect choice for beginners who are just looking for a plug-and-play approach. With its fixed wide-angle 18-50mm to 50 millimeter equivalent lens, multi-phase recognition autofocus feature, and a slight flip-out 3-inch touchscreen, the ZV-1 Mark II can be set and ready to shoot in minutes. But don't be fooled by its small size and relative simplicity. The ZV-1 Mark II is a very powerful camera capable of capturing crisp 4K at up to 30 frames per second with vivid colors. If you want a bit more firepower and overall more flexibility, especially when it comes to lens choice, then the ZV-E10 can also be a great option. The great thing about these two and a lot of recent cameras is that you can also set them to stream video via USB and use them as webcams if that's your preferred workflow. As long as you don't want to record in resolution higher than full HD, you can just tether your camera to your computer using a USB-C cable and you'll be able to use it like any other external webcam. If you're looking to record your video in 4K, you'll need to either record it straight from the camera to a SD card or to your computer through a video capture card. So what is a video capture card? A video capture card is to video what an audio interface is to sound. Since computers don't have an HDMI input, an adapter is required for your computer to process your camera's video output. This is where the video capture card comes in. In layman's term, it converts the video feed of your camera's HDMI output into a signal that your computer can process via one of its regular USB ports and record to your hard drive via stream casting software like the popular app OBS, for instance. A video capture card is your best bet if your camera doesn't stream video over USB or if you want to capture UHD video straight to your computer without having to use an SD card. Popular options include this Elgato 4K Cam Link and Rode just came out with the Streamer X which is pretty much an audio interface and video capture card wrapped into one, making recording your video and audio simultaneously easier than ever. Once you have recorded and shot your podcast, it is time to put your episode on the chopping block and edit it. Now the editing part of the job can be a bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. The first thing you'll need is a video editing software. Luckily, there are plenty of powerful and free video editing tools out there. If you're a Mac user, your computer should have come with a version of iMovie, which features all the tools required to create and export a great video podcast. The same can be said about ClipChamp for Windows users, and DaVinci Resolve by Blackmagic Design is also a great option for those looking for a more advanced yet free option that works both on Mac and Windows. 
Now, video editing can seem like a daunting task, but there are things you can do to make the job easier. The main one is to synchronize your audio and video feeds at the source, meaning while you are recording. Whether you're recording with a webcam, your phone camera, or a full-fledged camera, synchronizing your audio at the source will ensure you won't have to deal with that in the editing software. It's not impossible, but it's time-consuming and can get pretty frustrating. Another way to keep things simple is to keep things centralized, and for that, nothing beats the browser-based, all-in-one podcasting platform, Riverside.fm. Designed to streamline and simplify the podcast creation experience, Riverside offers a complete solution for podcasters from which you can record your podcast, audio and video feeds, solo or with multiple speakers, in person or remotely. Riverside records each participant's feed on their respective computer while simultaneously uploading the high-resolution files to the cloud for immediate browser or computer-based editing and export at the end of the session. You can use any of the video sources we mentioned in this video, synchronize your microphone audio at the source, easily edit the recording straight from your browser with a no-nonsense user-friendly interface, and easily create shorts for social media. Riverside is subscription-based and offers different tiers based on your podcast needs, and honestly, I highly recommend it. Now, if things get serious and your podcast expands either in terms of number of speakers or overall production budget, you might want to consider a multiple angle camera setup. A great option for a multiple camera setup that doesn't break the bank is the Mevo Star streaming cam system by Logitech that comes with free wireless cameras that can be controlled remotely from a phone. You can also use more elaborate cameras naturally, like the ZV-1 Mark II or the ZV-E10 that we mentioned earlier. Using multiple cameras also calls for the use of a live production switcher, like this Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Pro HDMI live stream switcher. With this, you can both produce your video live by switching between cameras at the touch of a button and record each camera feed separately in case you'd want to edit the video further later. And even better, the ATEM automatically creates a resolve file with all camera feeds synchronized and organized on the timeline so you can just open it and start editing. Now, I just want to give you an idea of the general concept, and I'm just brushing on it, but we'll dedicate a full video to complex camera setups for podcasting in a video down the line, so stay tuned for that. So there you have it. By now, you should have enough leads to get you started if you're looking to add video to your podcast. In the meantime, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us in the comments below. This was Gabe with BNH, and I'll see you next time.